So um, any further questions on um, uh, on what we discussed earlier about the fivefold ministry and uh, specifically about the you know different ministry gifts? Um, Okay, so one of the things that we see is that uh, you know there could be an overlap of the ministry gifts. Like um, you know, a person can be apostolic uh, and also carrying the prophetic mantle, right? Like we see um, Paul himself, uh, you know, referring to himself as an apostle of the Lord Jesus, and he. Uh, also saying, you know, mentioning that he uh, that he is called to be a teacher, you know, uh, and uh, and so on. So we 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 look at those references. So we can see that there there can be a, an overlap uh, of uh, of the uh, ministries. So um, so that's that's something like uh, yeah. Here's the verse: First uh, Timothy chapter two and verse seven. It's there in your note. But uh, let me just put it there. First Timothy chapter two and verse seven. So um, it says, um, uh, Paul writing, and he's saying, "To which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles." And uh, yeah, and Second Timothy also. Uh, I'm sorry. First um, Timothy chapter two verse seven, for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. Uh, and he says. Uh, uh, I'm I'm speaking the truth in Christ and not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth, and the same thing in Second uh, Timothy one and verse eleven, uh, to which I was appointed a, a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. So we see that uh, um, in both these places, uh, he's talking about the fact that he proclaims the gospel and uh, he does that with the apostolic. He's an apostle and also a, a teacher. Um, so we see that mentioned. So th there could be an overlap, like uh, like for example, uh, a pastor and a teacher. Right? So in in certain circles, like people um, really look at it as a as a four uh, fourfold and not really fivefold ministry, you know, because it's the uh, the pastoral and the teaching. Uh, gift normally it just flows together because one who is called to nurture and care for and feed the flocks, uh, um, you know, um, find out what is wrong and and then you know uh, rectify and make and all those things. So it, it it requires the teaching as well, you know, the revelatory gift as well. So um, so many many sometimes people look at uh, the preaching and teaching as one thing, but uh, for our purpose of study, of course, you know, we are looking at it as, typically as the uh, the orthodox uh, viewpoint of it being a five-fold ministry, right? So, so there could be an overlap, you know, like uh, a pastor or and an evangelist. Um, for example, for Timothy, Paul says uh, Paul is Timothy is actually the pastor in Ephesus, right? He's a, he's a young man and he's a pastor. He's overseeing the church there. And uh, like, for example, when we and we kind of um, get that, infer that when we see the epistle, First Timothy and Second Timothy, he writes about <clears throat> Paul writes about you know what he should do and uh, how he should appoint people, and uh, and so on. And then he goes on to uh, tell Timothy also you know do the work of an evangelist. Right. So uh, we see that it's um, it's a, it's a, sometimes it's a, a dual thing. Right. Okay. Right. A few more things about uh, the apostolic. So we see that there is, um, you know, since God, uh, since it's the Lord who is actually establishing this gift in the church, and he definitely also, uh, it goes without saying that he anoints or empowers that ministry gift uh, specifically. Right. So there is an anointing, uh, which is the person and work of the Holy Spirit. Um, the work of the Holy Spirit, really, uh, uh, the empowering work of the Holy Spirit for that particular uh, ministry gift. So if somebody is called for that ministry office, then you can be sure that there, was, there is an anointing for them to carry out that objective, right, to, to function in that office. Okay, <clears throat> so our example in ministry is the Lord Jesus, right? Uh, our example is really the Lord Jesus. Our example, when we are 
you know, in all our serving and in all our uh, uh, worship and following the Lord and putting to death the deeds of the body, we are moving towards Christ-likeness, right? Progressively becoming more Christ-like um, in, in our in our day-to-day -day life. You know, as disciples, we follow uh, the master. We follow the principles and the precepts, but we follow the master to be more like him. Right, so uh, he is our example, and uh, uh, pr the primary example for you know for all these ministry gifts. So uh, we look at his life. We look at how he ministered, and that is what something that we're going to see. How did the Lord Jesus minister in all these gifts? Right. So we see uh, several scriptures which refer to the Lord Jesus uh, by these ministry gifts. So let's look at a few examples, a uh, few uh, scripture references. We look at uh, Hebrews 3 and verse 1. It says, therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. Okay, Hebrews 3 and verse 1. Consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. Matthew 13, verse 57 here, these are the words of the Lord Jesus, and he's referring to himself as a prophet. Right? Matthew 13 and verse 57, so they were offended at him, but Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own house, own country, and in his own house. Right? That's uh, Matthew 13, 57. These are all in your notes, page five of your notes. Um, page six, the Lord Jesus referring to himself, and he's describing the function of the evangelist, actually. Um, uh, Luke chapter 19, verse 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the shepherd, uh, the, the pastoral role, several references. Um, one is uh, John chapter 10, where the Lord himself says that I am the good shepherd. Okay, I am the good shepherd. Um, First Peter 2, verse 25, Peter is referring to, he's calling himself as, uh, you know, a, a shepherd of the flock. But then he says, now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls, referring to the Lord himself. Right? You were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. So, um and first peter 5 also is another reference so we see uh, the lord himself referring to himself uh, as a good shepherd and then um, we see peter making those references then of course the ministry uh, gift of the teacher uh, matthew 9 verse 35 um, we know that the lord jesus went about preaching he went about demonstrating in healing he went about teaching right so uh, it's it's mentioned there then uh, Matthew 9 and verse 35, then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. So the preaching the gospel, teaching in their synagogues, and, um, you know, and demonstrating with supernatural power, healing every sickness and uh, disease. So the Lord Jesus is, we see as an example of all the ministry gifts. So it's a, it's a safe thing to do, to look at, to study the life of the Lord Jesus and how did he minister as, uh, you know, as an evangelist, as a pastor and as a teacher. So we are going to be uh, looking at that in this course, right? So the, then we come to that, um, that question which Avni had earlier saying, you know, is everyone called for the, uh, for this fivefold ministry? Well, uh, uh, that need not necessarily be the case. Um, so the thing is, we, we see that there is a difference between ministry gift or ministry office, okay, like the apostle, evangelist, pastor, teacher, and there's a difference between that and the ministry function. Okay, we we again we we looked at this in the first semester when we studied the Holy Spirit class in in the Holy Spirit uh, course, um, where you see that okay, let me just put that there. Ministry gift um, versus function. We see that you know all of, all of you, uh, if you are if someone asks and says uh, you know how can I be born again, 
or you know um, and such questions then i'm sure that we or you, you, you we would be able to share the gospel right or uh, you know what must i do to be saved you know we may we'll be able to share the gospel and um, and lead that person to christ or you know even even in our day to day that uh, we see someone and then we we share we can share the gospel and lead them to the saving knowledge of the lord so what are we doing in that scenario you know in that in that situation we are actually doing the function of a evangelist that we would that we this is how an evangelist would function so we are doing that carrying out the function of an evangelist where we carry the where we take the good news uh, of christ we share the gospel uh, we could also uh, uh, you know carry out the function of the of the pastor like you we care for uh, for the flock we care for a fellow believer we we nurture them in the words of faith we um, you know we we uh, we see if they have any problems anything if they if they are hurting and then if they need her healing in those areas so we we could do that right we could be moved with compassion and and do that we could also function as as a teacher where um, god gives us a revelation or we've studied the word and then we could teach someone you know it could be a setting like a bible study it could be a home uh, where we were teaching our family members but we can function as teachers meaning that we make the complex things simple we receive the revelation we are grounding someone in the word of god in the revelation uh, uh, of, from that comes from the word of god so yes we can function uh, and definitely in the prophetic right uh, for every believer can hear the voice of god and share um the what the heart of uh, god is you know and the now instruction of god and uh, for that particular moment word of knowledge word of wisdom so we can hear and share uh we all of us as believers can function in the prophetic and also the apostolic the same way you know very interesting we see that uh, the church in antioch um we see we don't we, we we don't know who actually started it but we we know that these were believers um uh, uh, who were being persecuted in jerusalem and as they moved from there they went to many places and uh, you know we read about philip uh starting the church in samaria and uh, and and the people who actually started the church in antioch we don't even know their names but they were believers of the lord jesus they went and they they planted the church they did the work of uh, you know they shared the gospel people gathered together and so so what did they do there they they were primarily functioning as uh, you know as an apostle would do uh, go there share start a work uh, where there was no work um uh, work of uh, the gospel Uh, so so all of us we can function in uh, we we ha- we can do the ministry function okay uh, so we can move in these but it is different for as a ministry gift now what is the difference you know apart from the fact that there's a title the fact is that this is what we are called to do uh, primarily in life this is our calling in life right where god calls and commissions and says okay i want you to be this i this is what i want you to be primarily in 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 uh, you know as you go through life this is what i want you to be right it's uh, and another another very uh, you know a crude analogy would be like i you know i can take care of my body you know first aid if there's something's hurting but that does not make me a doctor right uh, so uh, doctors per- person who's qualified experience gifted and uh, trained and so on so the lord uh, you know call some to be uh, the fi- in the fivefold ministry with the ministry gift whereas all the believers all the believers all all of us are uh, empowered by the spirit of god to function in the uh, in the ministry to function to carry out this ministry function so so which is a great thing right so all of actually all of us start out carrying out the ministry function and uh, some of us are drawn to certain things and because that's how the lord has uh, you know kind of uh, um, he, he has knit us together and we are drawn to certain things and we want to do that and, and so on so uh, and the lord separates and says okay you know i want you to do this 
Okay, so um, so that's the difference between ministry gift and ministry function. So so the um, so we don't have to unnecessarily put pressure on ourselves. We don't have to um, you know take these call ourselves with any titles, right? And um, it's it's really unnecessary, right? You just do the work and let people see the fruit and let people refer to you as so and so you know like so paul right through the epistles and also peter so you see that they don't really uh, yeah of course he fun he mentions here in these verses you know I, I did this and so on but then in his greetings and all that he just says okay i'm a servant of the lord right so there's no title there i'm apostle so and so or prophet so and so um so there's no title there right it's it's a, it is it is really a role it is a it's a it's, it's a function it's a role it's a job description to put it simply so we don't have to unnecessarily you know, trouble ourselves put ourselves under pressure and so that we need to perform like this no just serve the lord the way he is called you know pursue desire uh, hunger after god and hunger after the after the gifts and uh, and and at any given every given opportunity you know uh, be sensitive to the leading of the spirit and do it that's that's it that's that's ministry right okay so um so we see this the difference between ministry gift and function so any uh, any clarification on this do you still have a question about ministry gift and function anyone okay so um, I guess we, yep, go ahead, Desan. Uh, Pastor, I'm thinking more along the lines of uh, Gidon. Uh, uh, Gideon? Gideon, sorry. Yeah, okay. Um, where, um, yeah, I, I think what I'm wrestling with is, uh, so God calls you for a uh, five-fold ministry uh, for one of the officers. Okay. Uh, but it's you know so the, on on one hand it is uh, it's it's uh, like you mentioned you know not everything has to come to a standstill a lot of us make uh, make that like that impression that we have to leave everything and just remotely work and and Pastor Ashish is such a great example of um, mm. man and it's like starting both uh, right? um, but the other side of it which is uh, you know you you kind of uh, you feel uh, probably inadequate. You, you're not sure. You, you, you've heard calling. I mean, you know it's for certain, but but somehow you know, you're trying. Not exactly disobedient, but uh, but you know you probably that self confidence is not there. Um, mm. I don't know if, but uh, you know, I I tend to like. I think this is a very personal question, but I tend to feel that something like I'm like I look at ministers, I look at apostles, prophets of our days, and and like. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I know that God wants to use me, but I'm thinking like I've got so much to learn. You know, when will I ever get there? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not in a hurry, but but just uh, you know, the whole uh, aspect of um, uh, and I'm I'm thinking probably you know this is also an, um, a territory where the enemy tries to cast mm -hmm. doubts on your mind yeah. and say. You know, yeah. uh, no, no, no. You, you know, it's it's your own making up stuff. You're making up mm. stuff, kind of thing. So, so just if you could speak to a little bit, of, like, um, yeah, yeah, Thanks. yeah. So the thing is, like, uh, uh, you know, I, uh, well, God is God calls us, God empowers us, God uh, exposes us to certain environments where uh, we can serve. So the thing is, just to go ahead and serve, right? Um, so we don't have to compare. One is the the whole thing of comparison we're comparing ourselves to another let's say pastor and we're looking at the way he or she you know ministers the kind of crowd that is there the function that is there and then uh, also the messages that they are sharing and uh, and then we feel a little when, when we compare they say oh I, I i didn't know about that I, I wish I knew about that. I don't. I don't have information about that, or I have not. Uh, you know, um, so I, I obviously, you know, I'm waiting to, or maybe, uh, you know, I equip myself in that, and then, and then there's some other thing that I don't know about. So uh, that will always be there, right? So the thing is that uh, ministry is uh, that we are being spokesperson for God, that we are ambassadors for God in the realm that He um, places us 
right in the in the realm that he places us and uh, the the word comes from him the empowering comes from him of course our responsibility is to study and um, you know equip ourselves but he really leads us he leads us into the environments he leads us into the sphere of influence and as um, you know the thing is like uh, he is a father at the, uh, you know and uh, he 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 knows what's good for the children yes of course he will push us into you know uh, zones that we are not comfortable and and that's always part of growing and so on but our uh, like um, we see in one corinthians our sufficiency is from him like and he actually uh, his strength uh, overshadows our weaknesses our perceived limitations his strength overshadows well in life we will always feel inadequate with, because we are finite right uh, and when we consider uh, the, the, the whatever is out there we will, you know maybe you're going on a mission trip we will feel that certain and 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 that dependency on god is great and that's good and we depend on the holy spirit we depend on him for revelation we depend on him for thing and the, and, the, and the best part is where we start doing it right in the realms where we are uh, in the spheres of influence where we are like when we say spheres of influence i say okay maybe it's it's the home right uh, it's a family or maybe it's the the local church or the fellowship or the bible study um, whatever you know or the mega church you know where god has uh, placed us and uh, to be faithful to share and uh, it, it's 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 not just sharing but i you know it's so many so many other things so much more and it's a journey again right it's a journey now he will expand that uh, sphere of influence uh, he will you know he'll continue to you know as you grow in the lord as we grow in the lord he will continue to take us you know in, in you know and expand our uh, influence for the sake of the kingdom of course and as we grow you know we are putting to death certain things in our body uh, we are we are growing in revelation knowledge but we are also you know dying to certain things which which are not really helpful in that sphere of influence like we could easily be pulled down so well it's it's a good thing the thing is just to just to follow the lord and there will be times where we you know feel inadequate especially when we look at ourselves our backgrounds maybe uh, uh our own strengths etc but just trust in the lord and and go for it yeah thank you yeah very encouraging yeah. yeah thanks yeah yeah chris sorry you have a question go ahead Uh, yes, uh, so I'm actually referring to uh, in page number five in the notes where they were mentioned um, about the order stated in uh, one twenty twenty eight. So one it mentioned one of establishment, one of leadership. Yeah, and um, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to uh, you know kind of confirm that you know there is in a sense also a little bit of a hierarchy over here, and. Um, uh you know um, in the present time as you know as we are you know going getting to the end and to the end times and you know churches will will need to you know um, you know get closer to each other mm. and also you know uh, you know collaborate would that also mean that you know uh, people who are in in, in the apost uh, apostolic uh, ministry would mm. would take on leadership roles or would need to take on leadership roles to be able to you know to uh, ensure that uh, you know uh, you know that there are uh, you know things that happen uh, you know as as per god's god's will um, so i'm just trying to uh, you know mm. read into these two these this, that particular section of the of page number 5 yeah your thoughts on that yeah so when we look at the one of establishment we see that this is how it unfolded so that is why you know we we see that order being uh, mentioned there and um, in a government responsibility governmental responsibility and authority uh, flows because it's god's design um, so that is that is that's the other thing but um, you know to really um, say that uh, you know that an apostle should take on you know uh that would be incorrect because um, you know uh an 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 apostle actually um of course uh, reflects the ministry of the lord jesus to the church so um there would be the feeding there would be the influencing and it, it can come 
uh, from different ways. You know, it can come through, um, you know, uh, association. It can th come through uh, several ways to friendships. And then so, um, so that influence, apostolic influence, uh, whom and also divine connections that God would bring about. And, uh, and then, you know, or God would himself, you know, um, raise um, the person as an apostle, uh, you know, to the to the body of Christ. So, so that's the thing. So it is not as if, you know, um, like, uh, I get your question, what you're saying, it's not as if, okay, I, uh, you know, here's this church, and I, I want to, I, uh, uh, I need to be connected to an apostle, or I need to be connected to you know, someone so that uh, because that's the thing that we see here. So the the apostolic influence or the prophetic influence or any other, you know, it can come through many different ways, and God can bring it, you know, make it happen uh, in different ways. And uh, like we said, you know, you'll also raise up uh, people um, you know, with these ministry gifts um, uh, with it to to uh, to strengthen the church. You know, the objective is obviously. Edification, equipping of saints for the work of ministry, edifying the body of Christ, and, and all those other things. You know? So, so it is the Lord who does that, and he he will you know he, he continues to do that um, in the in the different churches. Yeah. Does that uh, help, Chris? Or is... But will oh, uh, my question is will. Um... Maybe you've already answered it, but I was just trying to confirm that you know, will you know, people it could be you know, specific people or it could be churches who have um, who are in who are uh, you know, doing apostolic um, ministry, okay, and therefore they have also been provided that leadership, um, you know, um, um, that that influence uh, in the mantle, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. uh, you know, in a sense that they could they they may be. What, the ones who need to be, uh, you know, um, for, in a sense, followed, or you know, uh, because it is mm. as per God's, uh, you know, divine, uh, uh, you know, uh, what he has, what he has provided to them, that 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 okay. uh, influence. Right. So to the really perfect, what is lacking in the other? lacking in any any body of you know any probably a local church or a fellowship or something you know, to to perfect what is lacking yeah. right so yeah so so the god will use that god will lead god will use that and uh, and uh, use uh, you know a, a apostle or you know a ministry team to in order to perfect that yes yeah. god will use that okay so um so let's uh, move on. So, um, you know, it, there is more on the fivefold ministry in uh, chapters three and four in the book called Equipping the Saints, uh, page number six, uh, the bottom of page six. Um, the link is there, so you can you can actually read about uh, that, and I think that clarifies a lot of uh, uh, you know um, uh, clarifies the position of the uh, ministry gift as well. So you can you can read through that. Okay. So let's look at um, the ministry gift of the evangelist okay? and uh, also look at uh, how did the Lord Jesus, you know, in his earthly ministry, how did he go about doing the ministry of the evangelist? So what are some of the things that we see in his life? Um, uh, and uh, we're just going to uh, quickly, you know, uh, learn a few things and glean a few things from there, right? Um, and uh, we, we started looking at the term, the term evangel, of course, means good news or glad tidings. Okay, so the gospel is the, it's the good news. It's the good news of salvation. Uh, it is also the power of God for salvation. Okay, uh, we should never forget that. While it is the good news, uh, it is also the power of God. So uh, an evangelist is a proclaimer of uh, this glad tidings or this good news, one who proclaims, one who ministers that, and um, uh, and Romans chapter one and verse sixteen, Paul uh, says, "I'm not ashamed of this good news of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek." It is the power of God for salvation. So this message, 
that uh, we share this message of the Lord uh, carrying the sin of the world on the cross and dying on the cross and who believes and who receives that uh, is born again. Right? Uh, this message is the power of God for salvation. So which means that it takes the power of God to break the power of sin over people's lives. So there is nothing else that can actually do that. You know, uh, self-help books can definitely, you know, uh, help, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, change a person, you know, put your person's habits and, 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 and so on and improve their quality of life and so on to a certain extent. But what can really break this power of sin and bring about that that change on the inside of a person to 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 break the chains of um, sin to break the power of uh, sin it is the gospel right so so paul says and i'm not ashamed of it i'm not ashamed of it because uh, for the jews it was uh, they were seeking after a sign and for the for the greeks you know for them it you know the ones who were actually intellectually inclined uh, for them it was it did not uh, it was a lot it was illogical like it did not make sense it seemed foolishness and paul says you know this foolishness uh, is what god used to put to uh, put to shame the wisdom of the wise right so it's the foolishness of the message of the cross that actually it is the power of god right so uh, so we see that this gospel, this power of God, is what is proclaimed by the evangelist uh, as a proclaimer. Okay, so Luke chapter four and verses seventeen to nineteen. Okay, the Lord Jesus, um, he opened this uh, scripture to Isaiah, uh, and then he he read that out when he was in the synagogue. Okay, so uh, let's let's look at that verse, uh, Luke four seventeen uh, to nineteen. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Okay, so uh, in a way, it describes, uh, uh, and and then and you see, you know, the Lord saying after he, he reads that, and he says, you know, today this is actually uh, fulfilled in your hearing, and we see that he ministered in this way, right? So ministered to to preach the gospel, to heal the brokenhearted, to set uh, people who are captives, who set them free, uh, to open the eyes, blind eyes, both spiritually and uh, and physically, and so on. So uh, we see that. You know, this was really his job description or his mission statement. The Lord saying that, um, you know, this is what it is. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Upon me. Uh, he's anointed me to do this. These are the tasks. He has anointed me, empowered uh, by the Holy Spirit to do this. Okay, so that's the first thing. Uh, if, if, if When we look at uh, the Lord Jesus moving in this way, or functioning in this way, um, this 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 mission uh, that he described, and he's saying today this is fulfilled in your hearing. Um, we see that he was first of all he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. Right? The things that he did, the earthly ministry, he did under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, as empowered by the Holy Spirit. Okay, Luke chapter four verse eighteen. That verse that we said just now, read, read just now. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Okay, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Holy Spirit has empowered me. Okay. Um, okay um, and then we, we look at Acts 10 and verse 38. Right? Acts 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So... Uh, he went about doing good, and what were those good things? He went about, uh, you know, teaching. He went about preaching. He went about healing. Uh, he went about delivering, and all these are good things. So, if we are in two minds, you know, about healing and deliverance, and you know, all these things, these are good things. And uh, because he was actually setting people free from the oppression of the devil. 
and so these are good things and uh, god was with him and he was uh, and he went and did this by the anointing of the holy spirit and so he's empowered by the holy spirit the the teaching that he taught again uh divine revelation and by the holy spirit right let's look at a couple of other verses um which talks about the power of god right matthew 12 and verse 28 but if i cast out demons by the spirit of god surely the kingdom of god has come upon you so he's referring to the deliverance that he was doing and the people were actually attributing that to a act of um, you know the work of uh, demons but he's pointing them back saying that it is by the spirit of god if i cast out demons a power encounter with the you know with the with the spirits and he's casting them down out in order to deliver the person and saying this kingdom of god has come upon you okay uh hebrews 2 um the writer of hebrews confirming hebrews 2 and verse 4 for god also bearing witness both with signs and wonders with various miracles and gifts of the holy spirit according to his own uh, according to his own will and uh, verse two um, how can we it's verse three sorry how can we neglect if we how can we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which at first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed by those who heard him so we see that he was ministered he was um, you know filled by the spirit empowered by the spirit and he ministered uh he's we know that the lord jesus spoke to varied audiences different kinds of people um so uh, in scripture we see that he spoke to the you know uh, uh, luke chapter 4 talks about the fact that he went came to share the gospel to the poor so uh, poor meaning be poor in spirit spiritually poor spiritually needy and uh, also in the natural you know uh, people who did not have much who were poor right um so he came to share the gospel to the poor to the lost sheep of israel i think this was one of the questions that uh, came out uh, came up in the mentoring hour you know uh, why uh, did he you know when during his conversation with the side of Phoenician woman why did he say that you know um was his task only to speak to the jews and did he change his mind uh, but the fact is that um, his ministry um you know uh, as we see the whole progression we see that he came to establish certain things he came to bring the gospel bring the good news of the kingdom to the lost sheep of israel to the jewish people and then but in his heart uh, it was always the the world right god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so and even in abraham through abraham the entire nations um you know all nations will be blessed so it was always global in the scope of saving the world but uh, this was it so uh, audience uh, poor uh, lost sheep of israel sinners right um, so varied audiences um and then the message of course um different uh messages that he shared he shared about um, uh, of course shared on repentance uh, he shared about forgiveness uh, shared about the kingdom of god uh, the government of god the rule and reign of god and uh, of course there were uh, messages on faith um, so he shared varied uh, messages and uh, he was calling people to repentance and he was actually sharing about the heart of god as well uh, time and again the heart of god towards sinners the heart of god you know in all these parables the heart of god okay so when we look at the methods that uh, the lord uh, employed uh, we see it was uh, he he traveled he preached he he taught and he also demonstrated uh, he reached out and healed he reached out and delivered he like we saw in acts chapter 10 verse 38 that he did those good things he was empowered by the spirit to do and he went about doing good so he did all this and um, and all setting free all those who were oppressed by the enemy right and the methods was uh we see it is very plain to see that he he preached he taught and he moved in the supernatural okay so um so as um so that's something for us to take away right when we look at 
the ministry of the Lord Jesus and the way he ministered, uh, he uh, he shared, of course, and he taught, but he also uh, moved in the supernatural. So, if we were to model our lives on, you know, uh, based on his footsteps, so we make our lives open to that realm as well, right? That we preach, that we teach, and we open our lives to the work of the Spirit to empower us and to step out and do those things, right? So step out in faith, knowing fully well that this is how he functioned as an evangelist, to the work of an evangelist, right? So it, it's not that just the message. It's not just sharing, but also um, when, when you see that opportunity to move in that. So message and the demonstration. And the communication and the demonstration, uh, both going hand in hand. Okay, um, let's. Uh, yeah, so those are the methods. Uh, well, with regard to uh, meeting the audience, uh, there was this, um, you know, hunger. He said, you know, I must preach this good news in the other towns as well. So there is this, um, there is this hunger. There is this desire to take the gospel to as many people as possible. Uh, is there a need? Yes, there is a need. So let, let me share that gospel. You know, this is what will set them free. This is what will, um, this is what people need to hear. They cannot be ignorant, you know. So uh, there's a, you, know, you see geographical territory being covered, you know, we went to towns, cities, villages. Uh, so is it, the scripture records that saying he went to cities, towns, and villages, and he himself saying, "I must preach this gospel. I must preach this good news in the other yeah. towns as well." Okay, so he traveled, he moved, uh, he went to different places, varied audiences, um, varied audience, and and he shared the uh, shared the gospel. So um, again, the takeaway is that um, for the work of the evangelist. Right. It is uh, the, the the scope is global, or uh, we can even say that okay, um, maybe the person is called to a particular place, a particular you know uh, people group maybe, uh, but also the fact that that there are households that are covered, there are there are people that are you know uh, that need to hear, so the evangelist is moved to. Uh, ensure that the message goes out. Okay, so uh, in Jesus' time, okay, he he traveled from place to place to place, and uh, and uh, in our day and time, well, the travel can be physical. The travel can also be, or the uh, the reaching of the message can also be uh, through various means, right? So um, uh, through through media and so on, uh, but you're taking uh, the gospel there. So uh, we see those methods. We see we see the kind of territories that was uh, covered uh, and the travel that happened, and also uh, of course there were challenges. You know there were there were challenges which we see. There were challenges. Uh, unbelief was a challenge. Uh, you know people were um, uh, not willing to believe, especially those who knew him, right? Knew him as he was growing up. Is this not uh, Jesus, the carpenter's son? Right? And uh, and we see that. Uh, the Lord actually did not do, or He says it. We could not do because of the unbelief. Okay, so the unbelief itself is a, is a, was a challenge there. There were demonic powers, you know, that uh, that would uh, manifest, and uh, and the Lord would cast them out. And there were the religious leaders who were uh, again um, challenging Him from time to time. So, for the work of the evangelists, were there challenges? Um, yes. The Lord Himself faced those challenges. So, um, just because we are doing the work of ministry and saying that I'm in the perfect will of God, uh, so therefore everything will um, will be fine, and there should be you know no bumps on the road is it's it's not uh, you know that's not the ideal thing. That's not the right uh, perspective because there will be challenges that need to be overcome, right? So, in the ministry of the evangelist, there. There were challenges that the Lord faced, 
And um, also one other thing that we notice is that people did support the ministry. Luke chapter 8, verses 1 to 3, we see that uh, uh, we see several people mentioned there, several women actually, who, who gave up their substance um, uh, to support the ministry uh, of the evangelist, uh, support the ministry of the Lord Jesus. Um, let me just read that verse, Luke chapter 8 and uh, verses 1 to 3. Okay. Um, and it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God and the twelve were within. And certain women who had been healed by evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons, and Joanna, the wife of Shusa, Herod Steward, and uh, Susanna, and many others. Uh, so the three women are mentioned there, and there were many others. So it could be a company of men and women who provided for him from their substance. Okay, so um, who uh, kind of supported all the travel and uh, you know the, probably the travel, the accommodation, and all that. So there was support from the people uh, towards the work. So so we see that also. Um, that's a that's again a, a takeaway for us that in the ministry. That the Lord did as an evangelist, we see all these uh, all these patterns there, uh, the way He was empowered, the kind of message that He shared, and so on. Okay, so we'll um, so we 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 can take away you know these um, from this ministry, and also um, we'll we'll go over it one other time. We'll we'll just do a quick overview again, um, and we'll look at several, uh, you know, specific scripture. But it's important for us to have this as a, as a framework. Okay. So, uh, because it's, it's what the Lord did and it's how he functioned. So it's good for us to have this as a framework. Okay. Um, we'll stop here. And, uh, of course, if you have any doubts, you can, um, you can always. Uh, are there any specific questions um, today, based on what we uh, covered today? Any specific questions? Or even in the previous session, any specific questions that you might have? Okay, so I'll um, stop the recording. Yeah.